Tropical storm Laura raked over Puerto Rico today, bringing heavy winds and rain, causing flooding across the island. Now it continues toward Cuba and into the Gulf. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Devin Bartolotta. Governor John Bell Edwards had re has requested a federal emergency declaration as not only Laura, but also Tropical Storm Marco make their way to the Gulf Coast. Let's get straight to a check on your forecast with your local weather expert, meteorologist Alexandra Cranford. You've been very busy this evening, Alexandra. We have been busy, Devin, I know, and we have seen these advisories come, and actually with the 10 p.m. advisory, the National Hurricane Center has kept the numbers really the same. These have not escalated to hurricanes yet. Even Marco, which as it moves into these warm waters, might achieve hurricane status in the next day or two. Laura way out there is busy interacting with land, and we are not expecting Laura to strengthen probably at all, at least in the next couple of days. And then once it emerges in the Gulf late Monday and Tuesday, it will have a chance to strengthen. But right now we're really more focused on tropical storm Marco, which is, of course, as you can see, the center of it getting into the Gulf of Mexico. It has winds still as of this afternoon, this evening and tonight measured at 65 miles per hour for maximum sustained winds. And when we look at Marco, it is not as organized. Actually, there's a lot of wind shear beginning to give it this kind of sheared appearance where all of the convection, the thunderstorms and clouds are really off to the east and the eye wall is actually uh, kind of opened up a bit. There's no defined eye wall around the center any longer. So the National Hurricane Center has kept its intensity where it is and the forecast path is still similar to so earlier today, we got that big shift in the path with Marco from the National Hurricane Center. The National Hurricane Center shifted it way to the east so that it's really focused right on southeast Louisiana. Tonight, they have kept it very similar, pretty much to what you may have seen earlier today as of 4 p.m. As for Laura, winds are at 50 miles per hour, and it is in the red cone here, of course, and is forecast to take almost a similar path once it gets into the Gulf and gets drawn off to the north so that we are still looking at two potential potential landfalls maybe of either category one hurricanes or at least strong tropical storms perhaps Marcos would be Monday and Laura's landfall over southeast Louisiana would potentially follow on Wednesday. Such a remarkable time to be talking about two different tropical systems, which it looks like will be moving through the Gulf, one right after the other, and unfortunately right over us. So tropical storm Marco, it's moving north northwest, still at a steady speed of about 13 miles per hour. And here it is. You can see that it's not looking very healthy. It's not taking on that characteristic spiral shape with everything filling in around it. There is a lot of shear, which I'll show you in a second, which is upper level winds, just making it difficult to get its circulation and organization going. However, there are warm Gulf waters. There is also plentiful dry air actually in parts of the atmosphere over the Gulf. So all of these things are kind of going to fight as we see Marco move to the north. The official forecast does call for it to just barely be a hurricane with 75 mile per hour winds perhaps by early tomorrow morning. So we'll see if that does happen Sunday evening. It could have 80 mile per hour winds and then the landfall still looks like maybe Monday afternoon with winds. You can see that the forecast uh, different lines here are missing where the landfall would actually be, but it would be maybe around 4 p.m. or so that could easily change even if this forecast path does stay the same, but it does look like it might by then either either be just barely a category one hurricane or a tropical storm. And that could change. This storm has really, as I mentioned, a couple of different things fighting its strengthening. And then also sometimes you can see with small storms like Marco, either a very quick weakening or sometimes a quick intensification. So certainly something to watch with all these factors at play, especially tomorrow. Then it will continue off over to the west. And here is the sheer and dry air. This is water vapor imagery with a loop going back six hours. So you can see the movement in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. Notice the oranges and reds are dry air. So very interesting that we're getting all of this southwesterly upper level flow here with the dry air in place. And Marco is going to be drawn kind of right into this area as this upper level trough moves off to the north and eventually the two highs, which we'll talk about in a second, off to the east and west, kind of drive it to the north. So something to see here, as you can see, it's not really being able to organize or strengthen or develop at the moment, and we will see what it does when it gets a little farther into the Gulf. Still, though, anticipating the potential for a 
maybe Category 1 hurricane when it gets close to our coast. We have been placed, of course, today under a hurricane watch for the pink shaded areas, tropical storm watches for the light pink areas. Also, we are expecting storm surge maybe up to four or five feet for some parts of the coast, as well as a few inches of rain at least with Laura on the way on Wednesday, which we will talk about in my full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, we'll check back in in just a bit. Thanks, Alexandra. And a number of evacuations have been issued around the area. Voluntary evacuations are in effect in Orleans Parish for the Venetian Isles, Lake Catherine and Irish Bayou, as well as parts of Jefferson Parish, like the town of John Lafitte, John Lafitte Lower Lafitte, Crown Point, uh, Barataria and Grand Isle. While mandatory evacuations begin at noon tomorrow for parts of Lafouche Parish and Plaquemines Parish. You can see a full and up to date list of evacuations on our website, WWLTV.com. Emergency management leaders are urging people to prepare now ahead of the two potential storms that will impact southeast Louisiana. Duke Carter caught up with people preparing and what you need to know to make sure that you're safe to ride out the storm. Hopefully it'll, you know, it won't do too much damage. Shoppers like Michael Lambert and Kerry Westmoreland are getting supplies. They want to make sure they're prepared for the two storms, Marco and Laura, that are forecasted to impact southeast Louisiana. It's got a, a new generator. It works off of batteries, and you plug it in, and re so you don't have to use no gas or nothing. I'm getting the generator. I'm getting the air conditioner, and I'm just going to cool my bedroom. The refrigerator. We've seen an uptick in the customers coming in and the traffic. Blake Livier manages Home Depot. Since the two storms could potentially impact Louisiana, Livier says flashlights, batteries, and generators are selling quickly. Also, hand sanitizer, wipes, and thermometers are being sold as well because of the pandemic. What we're doing really is, is being more strategic in utilizing the technology to where we can respond and ensure that we have the right product uh, in the communities that are in the most uh, impact zones and then we also have supplies ready for once it's made landfall and we absolutely know what's going on uh, to where we can respond for those communities very quickly as well. You know, everybody needs to be ready for potentially two hurricanes uh, coming into southeast Louisiana. Emergency management leaders in Orleans Parish are urging folks to have a game plan ready for the storms. They say whatever storm preparations you need to do, have it done Sunday evening at the latest. Yeah. You might want to consider another day or two of supplies tomorrow if you have the opportunity because uh, this has the potential to be affecting us through Thursday or Friday, uh, particularly if it's both uh, systems coming through. That was Duke Carter reporting. We also checked in with Ace Hardware stores in Orleans and Jefferson Parishes. Workers there tell us they're seeing more people get hurricane essentials like batteries and generators as forecast models predict landfall for southeast Louisiana. Well, just like with any storm that threatens New Orleans, attention always turns to the sewerage and water board. The good news is they say 98 out of 99 drainage pumps are working and that one last pump is expected to be fixed by tomorrow. And to make up for the diminished power, those five loud generators known as EMDs will be deployed as a frontline source of electricity rather than backups. Jefferson Parish officials say they've prepared drains and pumps ahead of the storm as well. And with COVID-19 cases still in the community, they're being extra cautious. Here's Paul Dudley. This press conference is really to make sure everyone stays very informed. A long list of Jefferson Parish leaders urging people to get ready for what you could call a triple threat. Two named storms moving towards the Gulf, coupled with COVID-19. Everybody. All of our citizens, all of our businesses should be in preparation mode. As storms make their way closer to the Gulf, COVID-19 restrictions are still in effect and leaders fear cases could surge if people aren't careful. I know with storms you have maybe people who aren't sleeping at your house normally. You might have older relatives you're checking in on. There's just a lot more activity out in the community as a whole. So please make sure that you never um, drop your guard down and know that we are still fighting COVID. Ahead of these storms, public work crews in Jefferson Parish are busy cleaning storm drains and drainage canals, adding that all 192 pumps are working and online. The familiar trouble areas are in Lower Jefferson Parish. In our coastal areas outside the protective levee system, we have roughly 16 backup pumps for those areas to uh, help protect Lower Lafitte, Crown Point, Barataria, and Grand Isle. Leaders were expecting an active storm season, but they never thought two named storms could be headed for the Gulf at once. 
For now, these leaders want people to prepare, not panic. You need to be ready, when it, whether it's a tropical storm, a Category 1 or a Category 5. Anytime something's in the Gulf, you need to pay attention to it. Paul Dudley, Eyewitness News. Leaders in St. Bernard Parish declared a state of emergency yesterday. They also brought in extra pumps after dealing with the impact of Cristobal in June. And the reason why we're doing that, um, because of this last storm that came through, a tropical storm uh, uh, did, you know, overtopped our levees in the eastern part of the parish. Now down in St. Charles Parish, homeowners remain worried about flooding. Back in May, 216 homes flooded after a storm dropped 12 inches of rain in two hours. Since then, the parish has been focused on fixing its drainage issues, and tonight the parish announced that they will close schools there through Thursday. That includes school and district activities and school board offices as well. Both St. Bernard and St. Charles have sandbag locations available, as well as a number of other parishes across the area. You can find a list of those locations on our website, WWLTV.com. And don't forget to download our free WWL TV app. You can keep track of local weather and the tropics with the latest forecast models and expert analysis. You can also sign up for alerts and submit pictures right there on your phone.